Hi, I'm Chris Sadler, CEO and founder of Kimball Solar. And today I'm gonna to show you my installation. Come have a look. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my battery and inverter, which is installed inside my garage. Now I've got 12 panels on my roof and they're split into two strings. And what that means is each string has got six panels on it and then they come back, the electricity comes back in DC. Now that means that I can look at each string and see if one string's performing better than the other. So it helps me identify if there might be some dirt on the panels or anything like that. Now, this is the DC electricity that comes in and these are DC isolators. So one for each string and then the DC cables run into the inverter. Now down here, I've got the batteries. Now the batteries are, we've got a five kilowatt and a five kilowatt module there and then this is a battery management system. Now I've left enough space that if I did want a third battery, then I could fit it above here. Now, these batteries are quite narrow. They only come off the wall about 10 to 15 centimeters. And as you can see, it's only about 1200 high. So it's quite a small compact unit. So it fits really neatly inside the garage. Now the cables for the battery come out. They're also in DC electricity and that also feeds into the inverter. The inverter is a clever bit. It takes the solar energy, it takes the battery energy, and it decides if it wants to charge a battery up, if it wants to discharge a battery, if it wants to pull energy from the grid or send it to the grid. This is the clever piece of equipment. Now from here, this is the AC cable that comes out of it. So that's spitting out the electricity that we can use, the energy we use in our kettles, toasters, ovens, the grid, all of that. Uh, here we got the AC isolator. So that's the one that can actually turn the inverter on and off. And we've also got a generation meter, which lets me know how much energy we've generated or how much energy we've used to charge up the batteries. Um, we can use the app as well. So if you log onto the app, then we can see the energy there as well. So the generation meter is, if anything, is a bit of a legacy device, but it's still there and it's still an MCS requirement. This is a Zappi, which is an EV charge point and it's solar enabled. What that means is if, it, if my panels are generating excess electricity, then it can send it into the car. Likewise, when the panels stop producing electricity, it will stop charging the car. It can also adjust the rate at which it charges the car. So effectively, we're never going to have to import or export any energy. It can just use the car as, a, as an additional method to store any surplus energy. So if you've got solar and batteries, when your batteries are full, then your energy will get exported to the grid instead. Now we don't really want to export if we can help it because we want to keep hold of the energy ourselves. And the two ways of doing that is by either putting it into an electric vehicle or putting it into a hot water cylinder. So behind me here is a device called Eddy. And this device monitors the grid. So downstairs I've got a box called Harvey, which is also by my energy. And that box monitors the grid to see if we're exporting or importing any energy. Now, if we're exporting energy, it will turn on the immersion heater and it will heat up the hot water cylinder using electricity rather than gas. So for example, at five o'clock this evening, our boiler would normally kick in and burn lots of hydrocarbons to get the water up to temperature. But instead, it won't need to do that now because the eddy has already done the job for it using nice green solar energy. Okay, in terms of how the system is sized and how it works for us, we as a family use four and a half thousand kilowatt hours of electricity every year. And our solar system generates around about 4,000 kilowatt hours of solar energy every year. So we've seen around about a 90% reduction in our electricity bill, but we've also noticed our gas bill go down. And that's because the Eddy hot water diverter is now doing some of the hard work that the boiler would have had to have done. So we're making savings by not having to pay gas. And also with our electric vehicle, we're now making savings by not having to pay for petrol. So we've seen a massive reduction in our energy bills. Now, I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully you've had a bit of insight into the real life examples of how batteries, electric vehicles, and hot water storage can work for you. If you're interested in finding out more, then get in touch and we'd love to design a system for you as well. Thanks for listening.